Today I'll walk you through the steps to take your repair from primer to clear coat and stay tuned till the end for tips on a smart blend. Now that we have this fender in primer, we need to block sand it straight. So the first thing we need to do is to spray a guide coat over here. And what a guide coat's going to do is it's going to show us any high or low areas that we have in when we're blocking it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my flexible block. This is a flexible block that will form to the contours of this body. We've got some 320 grit sandpaper on here. This is a good sandpaper to prep out any primer before you paint. If you prefer, you could wet sand this with 400 grit sandpaper. That'll smooth it out and get it ready for paint as well. There's several different ways you can prep out this primer for paint, but for the blocking purposes that we need to do, we're gonna use this block with 320. To get this panel as straight as possible, we wanna hold our block flat against the panel and block in an X pattern. And if you notice, I'm blocking down to the body line and up to this body line. I'm not gonna block right on that body line. That'll flatten it out. We wanna keep that nice, crisp, and sharp. So the purpose of the guide coat is to show any higher low areas. So we can see we have a little bit of a low area here as we block, and the texture of the primer is blocking out as well. When we're done blocking this, we'll be able to see that all the texture's removed, it's smooth. So this is a good idea to guide coat things before you block. If you're concerned about how you're gonna keep that body line straight and uniform, you could run a piece of tape from the bottom of the bumper to the other side along that body line and then block down to it, and then run a piece of tape on the top and block and remove the bottom piece of tape and block up to it. Okay, so after blocking the top section, you can see there's no black residue from the guide coat in any of this, so there's no texture in this. If I feel over it, I can feel that it's straight. The only textures left is right here. We're gonna hit that with the DA, and you can see, as you can see, the body line is crisp here, nice and tight, because we blocked down to it. Now we're gonna block up to that body line to make sure that body line stays formed. There's a little bit of area here where we need to block just a little bit more. And then we'll block this section here to make sure that's straight and that all the texture's removed. Now there are some reasonably priced tools you can use to mark out those body lines and then use that line as a guide when you're blocking. I'll try and leave a link to those tools down in the description. Now that we have it all blocked, it's all nice and straight. I don't see any pinholes or anything we need to fill or remove. So you want to look for any pinholes or any scratches that might show up under the paint or clear. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go over this entire fender with 600 grit. We're going to machine sand these hard edges. There are a few stone chips here, but we're not going to be concerned about those. We're going to machine sand this smooth, mach machine sand the primer around here because there was no body work done here. So we just need to flatten that out and get it nice and smooth. So we're gonna use the Orbital Merca sander with the interface pad. This will curve to the contours of the panel with some Duragold 600. Okay guys, I wanna show you this. This is why you sand out the scratches in the body filler. You wanna sand your body work with 320 grit sandpaper. You don't wanna use anything coarser than that before you prime. Don't leave any 180 or 80 grit scratches in your body filler or your paint. Sand everything down to 320 and this is why, and I'm gonna show you here. Can you see those body scratches? This vehicle's been worked on before and they've left scratches in their bodywork and primed over it. And what it does is it shows those scratches through the paint and the clear coat. So it pays to take a little extra time, make sure your body filler is blocked and sanded smooth, and those 180 grit scratches and those 80 grit scratches are removed before your primer. Okay, before I go ahead and sand this door for the blend, I'm gonna go ahead and clean it with some wax and grease remover. Okay, so now we have this fender almost ready. We still need to go around all the edges of the fender and make sure they're sanded properly so the new clear will adhere to it. Because remember, we're not putting color all the way up to the edge of these panels, just clear. 
We're gonna be blending this color in the primered areas and blending it into the door and then the front bumper cover. And we'll just be blending it up into the fender and not painting the top of the fender. So we're gonna prep out the edges of this fender with 600 grit sandpaper or 1500 grit Scotch-Brite um, or maybe both. But we wanna get all those hard to reach areas, get them sanded properly so the clear adheres properly. So, and then we'll sand this door with 600 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander. That's gonna be the quickest way to get it sanded smooth. Now I am going to remove the door handle on this. I'm not sure about the mirror or the weather belt. We may just mask those off. This is my wife's vehicle, but we may just mask those off. We're gonna remove the door handle. That's a, a troublesome place where clear coat likes to peel. So it's always a good idea to remove that. But we'll be blending the color into this door and then clearing it. We're gonna be using a wet bed. This is a high metallic gold finish. The colors do not match well on these golds. So I'm gonna to have to take some extra time making sure this color matches properly. But let's go ahead and do that and get it ready for paint. Now we're gonna go around this vehicle and quickly tape up the trim so we don't hit that when we're sanding really close to this edge because we need to sand right in there as close as possible. I could, we could remove the headlight, but for these purposes, we're not going to today. We're gonna to tape along the hood so we can sand this and not scratch the hood. We're not blending into the A-pillar, but we're gonna also tape around any trim so we can sand it properly. And we're gonna, sand, we're gonna go over and sand this with 600 grit sandpaper. That's a coarse enough scratch that's gonna allow that clear to adhere properly and prevent us from appealing clear down the road. This is the 600 grit foam pad. This one is super fine, it's made by Roberlo, but this does a nice job of sanding those tight and hard to reach areas. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wash this with wax and grease remover. Remove any dust, any contaminants, any oils or waxes that might be on this vehicle before we do the blend and the clear coat. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm preparing this bumper for the clear coat blend. I've sanded that edge with 600. That's where we want to do the clear, the paint blend. And now the rest of it I want to sand with 1500. And this is where we're going to end the clear coat. Okay, and then we're going to wash it in with some reducer. We'll talk about that later. Now it's time to mask it off for paint. We're gonna start with masking off the open door. We're gonna put a piece of tape on the back edge of this door and then shut it. Then that'll be ready to tape up and this car will be ready to tape up. So do the door jams first. We'll do that and then we'll tape up the rest of it and run plastic over it. Okay, so now we're gonna prepare this bumper for the smart blend. A smart blend is when you blend the clear. Rather than clear an entire panel, you're gonna blend the clear. Now, I normally don't recommend you do this, but if you're a DIYer, you may not wanna paint your entire panel. You might wanna spot in an area and then blend the clear. So what we're doing here is we're gonna mask off this pocket so we don't get any overspray in it. Now, when you're doing a smart blend, you wanna blend the clear in a very small area. So we're gonna blend this at the bottom and then at the top right here. This is where I'm gonna end my clear coat. Now, a little bit of an overspray will go underneath a piece of paper that I'm gonna loop over the top and loop over the bottom. And then we'll wash it in with some reducer so that will melt into the old clear. Stay tuned for a dedicated video on this topic. Keep your eye out, I'll be doing that soon.
Now we're gonna prepare our wet bed, our base coat, and then I have another one here for clear coat. So I'll have the base coat and the uh, wet bed all set up. And what the wet bed is, it is just straight binder. And we're gonna mix this binder in here and reduce it just like paint. It's two to one. And then we'll spray that over both panels. Okay, soak it real good. And that's called a wet bed. And what a wet bed does is gonna allow the metallics, when I blend this, to lay down flat and smooth. It's gonna give it a base to stick to. And so it has a good transition from the new color into the old color. So this will allow us to lay down our wet bed and then immediately come back, switch out the PPS system and put our base coat on. Okay, now we need to tack rag this off. So we're just gonna do this before we base. Well, before we spray the wet bed and then, then before we spray the clear coat. We've already washed this, although I'm gonna wash it again because I think I got some oil here when I was taping it up and that could cause a paint job to fish eye. Okay, now quickly tack it off. Okay, let's get my respirator and let's start spraying the wet bed. Go ahead and spray your wet bed just like you're spraying paint. Same type of gun settings. I'm doing 20 PSI on the gun. Full, almost a full fan pattern. And then three turns out on the volume. You want it to be wet. That's the whole idea. And that's how I like to spray it. So then when I apply my base, it has something to melt into. On your first coat of base, you want to cover the primer. Don't be concerned about the blend. Just get the primer covered. Let it flash for 10 minutes and then put on the second coat until the primer is covered. Now, as far as the blend on this, we're going to do it while it's wet. We're going to do it once, and that's it. I'm going to put a heavy coat on the first four to six inches of that door. And then as I gradually go out into that door, I'm going to pull back a little bit on my blend and dust coat it on, and then I'm done. That's it. That's it. It's done. Okay, so that's it. The blend is done. Okay. Nothing fancy. I don't want to get any piling out into this panel. So you got to keep it wet. And it's 100, over 100 degrees today. So it's going to be tough. But that's it. We blended right here. We just put one across the top there. Now it's time to clear coat. The clear I'm using today is the Valspar V Series Euro Clear. This is a high solids clear, and that basically means it's a more durable clear. I am spraying with the 3M Performance Gun. I'm really digging this gun, and if you haven't checked out the review and demo of the gun, check it out, I'll leave a link at the end. As far as the air pressure and the settings I'm using for this gun, I'm running 23 PSI on the air pressure. The fan pattern I have almost wide open, and the volume I have three turns out from closed. Just remember that the settings I'm giving you right now are just a guideline. They may change for you and the conditions you're spraying in. But if you want a more detailed explanation of how to set up your gun and how to adjust your gun for clear coat, check out my video, How to Lay Clear Light Glass. I'll leave a link at the end. The first coat of clear, we're looking to lay a nice medium coat of clear. On the second coat, we'll go a little bit heavier and that'll give us our glass-like finish. In general, when you're painting or clearing, you want to be about four to five inches away from the panel. You want to overlap 70%. You want to have a consistent speed 
and a consistent distance from the panel the entire time. What this does is it's gonna give your clear coat a nice uniform finish in the end. Now I'm gonna go ahead and lay the second coat of clear and you'll notice that I'm gonna slow down just a bit. And what I'm doing is I'm watching that clear coat. I'm putting more material on the panel, but I'm evaluating the clear coat as I'm laying it down, looking at it in the light to see how that clear is laying down and what the finish is gonna look like in the end. If I ever notice that I'm getting a little bit too much texture in my clear coat, what I might do is bump up my air pressure a little bit. This is gonna to help to atomize that clear a little bit better and let that clear coat lay down a little bit flatter. If you ever notice that your clear coat looks a little bit dry when you're laying it down, this means you're not getting enough material on the panel. So you need to bump up your volume just a bit. You may start with just bumping up the volume. You probably don't have to mess with the air pressure right away and then see how that looks. If that corrects it, then great. If you notice that you're getting dry spray just in spots, then this means that your technique is inconsistent and you need to reevaluate that and make sure you're being consistent on your passes. Okay, so this is how I'm gonna finish off the Smart Blend. I'm just gonna put a little reducer in with what was left of my clear, which wasn't a lot. And now I'm gonna peel this paper back just a little bit and then reattach it. And I'm gonna blow a little bit of reducer onto that blend area. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna help that clear coat to bite into the old clear. And then we'll just do a light polish on that and that'll be perfect. Now I'm gonna clean up my gun and let's take a look at the finished product. I couldn't be happier with how this job turned out. It was super clean and the clear coat laid down beautifully. The only thing that would make it better is if you like this video and subscribe to the channel. Let's check out this blend in the sun. Mm -hmm.